What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, Cameron with AC7 Owners. Uh, tonight we're gonna be doing our DIY on installing a CWA 100 coolant pump. Um, this is also a follow-up video to the install we did with the 4.0T uh, heat exchanger that Mark Racing sent us to upgrade on our car. We had their version one of the 3.0T heat exchanger, worked great. Uh, the larger one with, that's designed for the 4.0T, we've got that installed here. It's been running just fine, but we did data logs and compared the difference in IATs between our V1 3.0T heat exchanger and the 4.0T V3 heat exchanger. And to be honest, there was no difference in in IAT. There was no significant drop in IATs, but it did recover much faster. It recovered from our pulls a lot faster than the V1 did. So does that mean that the 4.0T heat exchanger isn't working as well or doesn't perform as, as well as I had hoped? Not necessarily, because we're still running it right now with our CWA50 OEM coolant pump, which I just don't think has enough juice to really push that added volume of coolant through the engine fast enough to take advantage of what the 4.0T heat exchanger has to offer. So we're gonna be installing our CWA100 coolant pump tonight. So we got our new pump made by Pierberg. We've got our wiring uh, harness here that's gonna be going on to make sure this communicates with the car properly. And we are going to dive into the install here shortly. This shouldn't take much more than maybe an hour or two, I hope. All we have to do is remove our fender liner, actually just unbolt it and pull it back. And then our coolant pump is located right there behind it. Um, uh, it shouldn't take us too long. It should be as simple as literally unconnecting the electrical harness clamping off the coolant hoses to stop any coolant from coming out because if you don't clamp them off, this coolant is just gonna run right out of here, guys. So make sure you clamp these coolant hoses. Then we unbolt it from the car, swap it out, put the new one in, connect the new wiring harness. And then obviously we're gonna have to bleed the system real fast from the supercharger because it, um, the OEM coolant pump's gonna come out when the CWA 100 goes in that's gonna be air in that CWA 100. So we're gonna to have to get that out of the system. And if you don't know from the coolant pump, the way it's routed, that coolant pump sends uh, coolant from the pump up to the supercharger. And so that air that we're gonna put in there with the new coolant pump needs to be bled out of each side of the supercharger. We're probably gonna get most of the air out on the passenger side of the supercharger and coolers, but um, we'll uh, make sure we take care of that and completely bleed the system again. And yeah, we're gonna dive right into it. If you guys have any questions, comments, leave them below uh, in the comment section for me and hope you guys enjoy this video. The first thing we need to do is remove the felt fender liner and we're not gonna remove it completely. We're just going to remove enough screws so that we can pull it back away from the car itself. And we'll use a bungee cord to secure it. And that should give us access to the coolant pump. It should give us all the access we need. So that's what we're doing now. All right, so we have it, all these screws out. This gets tucked into a little fender lip up here. So you just gotta pull it away, pull it towards the engine and away. And then we can Spin this up and what I like to do is get a bungee cord and we're going to pull this completely up and out of the way here and use the bungee cord to hook it up to the top of my coil springs, something to keep it up and out. So let me move this around here. So now the next object that we're going to be removing, we're going to loosen up this bottom fender liner with this screw here and mine's not really connected very well underneath because it's gotten torn up, so it should just be able to pull away. Now, one thing here, this is a sunroof drainage line here, I believe, uh, or it could be a drainage line from water that comes down the actual windshield. I'm not sure which one, but anyway, it's a drainage line that exits here. So we're gonna have to pop this off, which is as simple as that. Just tuck it out of the way. And let's remove this. Okay, so you can see mine is not very securely connected. It's actually not connected on the bottom at all. So it goes all the way to the back there. I bet I could move it pretty easily, but I don't really feel like messing with that too much. So I think I'm going to get another bungee cord to hold this back against the car. I'll be right back. I've got my other fender liner pulled back now and I'm gonna try and keep the camera here so that you can see what I do as I work, but I might have to adjust it um, just cause I'm gonna have to reach like way back in here. But you can see there's a uh, coolant line one, coolant line two. 
Uh, those should be pretty easy to remove. We've got our dreaded spring clamps that I don't have a spring clamp plier for, but we'll figure that out just using regular channel locks. And then on the bottom, we have our wiring harness. And what I'm gonna do first, just because uh, I have electrical stuff needs to be verified before we go into doing anything crazy, is we need to remove this and plug in our wiring harness connection that we have just to make sure that it actually connects correctly. And that way we know that we'll be good to go once we install the rest of the, uh, or when we install the new coolant pump. I'm sorry if this isn't the best angle. I just had to have some room to work and actually get in here. So I'm going to remove the clamp, or I'm sorry, the electrical connector, which this one's easy. Um, it's kind of hard to see. Actually, let me get a flashlight so I can show you guys. All right, so I know this isn't the best angle. It's kind of hard to see. I had to adjust the lighting to make sure you guys could see this. Uh, I'm removing this electrical connector and there's just a little gray tab on the back here. I'll put it back into place. There's a little gray tab. You can get it with your fingers, but if you have a little pick like this, it's even easier. You just press it down here and you push that down and then this should come off without any problems. So we have that off. So while that's off, we are going to test our new connector that we got from Merc Racing. And by the way, if I haven't mentioned it yet, everything we got today for this job has been provided by Merc Racing and uh, we are so thankful for those guys. Jose over Mark Racing is just amazing. So we plug this in, we put the uh, clip back down, it's secure, it's not coming off. And so now, let me fix the lighting here. We've got the extension on our cable off. Let me back it out. So that's connected. We're gonna just top this up and out of the way. You could just leave it unplugged if you want so it's out of the way, but we're gonna tuck it back here. You can see it's got this little clamp that connects to this line over here. That line goes down and away from the actual pump itself. It's not part of it. So next order of business is clamping off the coolant hoses, and then we're gonna start to remove this. For this next step, if you haven't gotten your drain pan yet, you wanna go ahead and get that underneath where you're gonna be removing these uh, lines. You're gonna definitely get coolant on top of uh, this fender liner if you don't remove it completely, but it's not the end of the world. So you wanna get your clamps on here and you wanna get them off as close to the pump as you can to lose as little coolant as you possibly can, but you're also gonna need to have space to get your uh, spring clamps completely off. So we're gonna try and come at it from the bottom like this so we have room to work and see if we can get our giant clamps to get on here and seat. All right, we got one on there. And then this other one on the back, this is a very small hose. There's a spring clamp here and there's one here. So this hose is only about six inches long. So we're gonna just have to kind of do it here in the top middle and hope that it works. Okay, so we've got both of our clamps on now and we're gonna get some channel locks and start to back these off. Hopefully I got enough room to get those off of there. Uh, pick is really good to use to get underneath the actual coolant line to break the seal away from the old part and we will start to remove this. All right, real quick, before we actually remove the coolant pump from, or the coolant lines from the pump, we, uh, I, I got to looking at this a little bit and I figured out something that might make life a little bit easier. Bear with me while I get underneath here. So I'm looking, I'm gonna be looking at this from underneath the car. So, um, let me move my light around to make sure you guys can see all this. So, all right, we're looking up at it right now. This is the bottom of the pump right here that I'm touching. If you look straight up here, there's a 10 millimeter nut right there. So that 10 millimeter nut is what is holding the pump to the car. And if we remove that, then we can actually have a lot more wiggle room on this to, in terms of getting it uh, moved around and, and helping us access the coolant line, the spring clamps and whatnot. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that. It's just a 10 millimeter nut. You can get a socket wrench in there. I've actually got a, uh, um, socket actual wrench that i'm going to get up in there and a 10 millimeter wrench you know socketing wrench whatever the hell they're called i can't think of it right now i'm going to get up there i'm going to loosen that break this away and uh then we'll work on removing the lines Let's 
get under here and knock this out. The nut is not on there very tight, so this should come off relatively easily. Well, I say that and then the last few threads, it's on there pretty tight. By the way, if you took the time to remove this fender liner, this job would probably be a lot easier. It's probably gonna make a lot less of a mess too, but I'm just trying to do this as easily and quickly as possible. So let's see here. All right, so uh, there is one more nut. I, I guess I missed because this thing isn't coming out yet. So I'm looking up and if the, the one that I just removed, if you just go up from it, there's another one higher up. So we're gonna have to move that one too. Sorry about that. But there we go. That is starting to come out there. All right, so you can see it's wiggle free. I can go back on top of the car and start to remove this. All right, so that is free. So now all we have to do is remove the coolant lines and the entire CWA 50 will be free to remove from the car. So make sure you have your drain pan ready and we'll hopefully remove this. Y'all, if you work on Volkswagen and Audis a lot, please don't be stubborn like me. Buy a set of actual spring clamp pliers and don't rely on all of these things here because this just turns into being a pain in the butt. Um, especially on this thing, because you got minimal room to get in here. So I'm gonna use my assortment of tools here. Spring clamp pliers would be great right now. Because what happens with the spring clamp pliers is once you get something on them and you get them loose, they start to want to rotate around. And then they rotate to a position that you can't really get them from. All right, so push this one up as high as I can. Looks like I got it off there. Um, I don't know if I want to go ahead and pull that one off, but I think I'm going to have to because this one's hard to get to with this attached. So uh, maybe we can pull this one off and turn this over and drain it a little bit. So here goes. I'm sorry if the audio sucks. I keep losing one. All right, so sorry if the audio sucks. I keep losing my mic while I do this. I, the lapel pin got lost and it doesn't like to stay in place. So we're using our 90 degree pick to separate the bond between the pump and the actual uh, coolant hose itself. And hopefully we can wiggle this out. Try and do is get a set of pliers on here and just try and wiggle the hose around a little bit. There we go. Okay, so not too much of a mess yet. I'm gonna pour, try and pour this out. There's not too much coolant in here. Just a little bit. I mean, there's, whoop, that's not good. Now we just lost a bunch. <laughs> so don't let your pliers come undone because then you're gonna lose a lot of coolant. So while holding these, I'm going to hopefully remove this. Oh, man. It's always fun getting to bleed your engine when you're not planning on it. That 
should be enough. Once again, we're gonna take a pick and break this seal here. This one seems like it's on just a little bit more. Okay, so let's try and, the good thing about this is we can wiggle this out here. I'm gonna move some stuff and bring this over here where we got a little bit more space to work on it. I'll try and adjust the camera real quick. So since this is the last one, I've got my hand on the actual clamps. I really don't want that thing to come out again. I'm hoping that I got, well, I'm thinking that my clamps are not far back enough. I'm thinking I'm gonna have to take them off and move them again. And I am not looking forward to this. This is not gonna be fun. I think this needs to be back just a little bit so that I have room to get this spring clamp off because right now the spring clamp does not want to give up Oh, this is gonna be fun. We're gonna make this really fast, hopefully. There's gotta be a way to do this without losing too much. So on this one, I'm just literally putting my thumb over it and coming back on top. There you go, I accidentally, or I actually didn't lose too much there. So, get that off. Looks like my clamps aren't actually doing too well, and these are Harbor Freight clamps, so no surprise there. Yeah, this sucks. All right, there we go. So. This should just come off now. It does. Make sure the jam pan is underneath where this hose goes to. Alright, we've got our CWA 50 out. It's time to replace it with the CWA 100. I do apologize for the mic issues. Uh, it, it just isn't staying put on my shirt. Uh, but we do have our two coolant pumps here. So this is our CWA50 that we removed from the car. This is our CWA100. I've got these little caps in here to stop any coolant from leaking. That actually came from our CWA100, but it's, it's in here now. So if we take a look at this, um, you can see that this one definitely looks like it's just a little bit bigger in terms of the, uh, I guess you would call this a turbine housing. Um, but, uh, you know, this is obviously something that's going to push a little bit more volume than the OEM one. It's a little bit taller than the OEM one. So what we have to do is get this uh, cage, this bracket off, if you will. It's a 10 millimeter nut. We're going to go ahead and loosen that because this is what we got to put on to our new coolant pump. And what I want you to do is when you do this, line these up correctly. And I want you to take note of where the brackets will line up. Um, this one is lined up off this back screw almost, and we got them lined correctly. But the one thing that I'm noticing that's different is that this is in a different place than this, these connectors. But this was on the back side of the uh, coolant pump when it was at, an, attached to the car, and it was really easy to access. So that means this is just gonna be slightly more to the right, which will still be easy to access. So it should not be an issue. So let's get this off. By the way, you guys, doing this job is a lot easier th than me filming it. Uh, me filming it is making it a little bit more complicated for me, um, just because I'm trying to make sure I get you guys the right angles and things like that. But um, this job isn't terribly difficult. A little messy, but that's about it. So get that apart. Go ahead and pry this apart a little bit. It's two pieces and it's kind of stuck to this metal 
band, or I'm sorry, this plastic band around the coolant pump. We have that off, make sure these studs stay in there. And now we're gonna put this around the new CW100. And I'm just gonna line it up pretty much exactly. Uh, actually, no, I can't line it up exactly as I want to. So if you look on here, there's a little bump there on the plastic and that lines up with this little bump and the metal there. And that is located differently on the CW50 than it is on the 100. So that's how you align this bracket correctly. So we're going to take this and put it over the correct spot. Get out of here, fly. And then get this one together as well. These go over the screws there. And then we can put this together. And that's what keeps this on there, keeps it from sliding and gets you aligned correctly. So we can get our nut started and tighten this thing up. I don't know if there's a specific torque setting or torque uh, value for this, but I'm just gonna do it till it's tight. Yeah, you pretty much just do it until you can't tighten it anymore. Okay, so our CW100 is ready to get installed back on the car. And you're literally just gonna do this in reverse. I'm gonna take a video of me putting it on there and I might have to fast forward it because I'm not really gonna talk through it unless there's something specific that I think you need to know about, but it should be pretty self-explanatory. Make sure you keep that uh, electrical line away from any coolant. Uh, when you put these on, I would suggest getting um, a little bit of soapy water or something and spraying this, and that will aid in putting your coolant lines back on. Now granted, the coolant lines are probably wet from coolant, so they might go on pretty easily as it is. Just make sure you get those spring uh, clamps down over these securely to keep it from opening up. And then what I would do if I were you, before you undo your uh, hose clamps, Make sure you go into your coolant reservoir and go ahead and fill it with coolant because what you don't wanna do is pull air from the uh, reservoir. If you still got coolant in your reservoir, that means air hasn't gotten pulled into the system. Even though we lost some coolant, we might be able to save it from having to bleed everything. I'm still gonna double check my heat exchanger and I'm still gonna bleed it from the supercharger just to make sure because I lost more coolant than I expected. Um, but uh, if you don't have the problems I did with the coolant clamp, then you shouldn't have to deal with that. But let's go put this back on the car. All right, so one thing that I'm noticing that I gotta put it in is this is the alignment of the actual bracket. When I do that, the top line comes in just fine, but the other coolant line's supposed to come in this way, and this is aimed the wrong way. So I need to take this apart and see if I can readjust this band to make sure that this is more in line with this. Okay, so real quick, what I found out after taking this back apart is that this plastic band is just a rubber I mean just a rubber thing here so we can actually take this and stretch it out and we can move it around so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna line this the same way that this one's aligned so if you look on this one the actual little hump in the rubber is right under this uh, screw here in line with the port with the exit port here and so that's what I'm gonna try and do I'm gonna get this I'm gonna move it around over to this All right, so I've got that almost in the exact same spot. I'm gonna try and get it exact. I don't wanna stretch it too much, but there we go. Now you can see they're both aligned correctly. So that should allow me to get this fit on the car exactly how this one was fit, and we should be able to attach the coolant lines without any issues. So I'm gonna put the uh, bracket back together and get over there and do that. Okay, so we have our bracket actually aligned correctly now. So that should go in the car. This should allow the coolant line coming uh, from this port to align correctly. This should be uh, hopefully a relatively simple uh, install of getting this back on the car. And when we do this, we are not going to remove the hose clamps until we get more coolant into the top of the car. So with the spring clamp, to get it something that will aid in getting it actually slid over, is to use a little bit of soapy water on the outside of the hose. This way you aren't fighting with it so much that you're 
clamp actually comes undone and coolant goes everywhere. Sorry if my head is in the way. stubborn so we're just gonna spray that down as well not get any in the actual pump um what I think is actually happening is while this clamp allowed me getting it up here allowed me to get it off of the old pump I think it's still too low and it's stopping me from being able to push the pump all the way up into the hose so I'm gonna have to try and loosen this so what I'm gonna have to do, just so you guys know, I pinched this off too close, um, just like I did with this one. I'm gonna have to move this out of the way, but what I'm gonna do instead of just trying to move it all the way is, I'm just gonna go ahead and resort to the fact that I'm gonna have to do a pretty good bleed, which is not a, a terribly difficult thing to do. I'm just gonna remove this, and then get that spring clamp loose and put it together, and then it should stop leaking, because all I gotta do is seat it down. So that's what I'm gonna do, and I'll let you guys know how that goes. Okay, so, um, Doing that worked. Uh, this was semi on. It wasn't fully on the uh, actual port, but when I removed the hose clamp, none of the coolant leaked out at all. It was on there enough that the coolant filled the pump and nothing came out. So I was able to get the hose clamp, loosen it up, put it up here, get it fully seated, and then put the hose clamp back on. So all we have to do now is get this set back into the bracket, uh, tighten up those 10 millimeter nuts that hold it steady, and then we get to plug up the uh, electrical harness and put the car back together and we'll be done. So I'm gonna do all that. You guys don't need to see me do this part. It's very self-explanatory where the bracket goes in there and just tighten up those 10 mils really good so that this thing doesn't move, put it back together. And then I'm not gonna do logs tonight. I'm gonna do that a little bit later on because it's uh, almost 12.30 at night and I've been working all day, but I will get logs so that I can compare this to what the car was running with IATs, um, just running the heat exchanger alone on the OEM CW850. I've got high hopes for this little dude. So we'll see what happens. Okay, so before we tighten all this stuff up, I just wanna see, uh, I wanna show you this. Um, you can see the, the new, that bright plastic, that's our new wiring harness. It's connected on the bottom. Uh, it's not a tight turn up like that. It looks tighter than it is with the wires are actually pretty loose. But since there was extra slack, I wanted to hang down. And what I didn't want to do was to hang on that part of the fender liner because these have a tendency to break and I would hate for that thing to get snagged on something. So up there on that hose, I did a really loose um, zip tie connection there just to keep that thing from falling down. It's not zipped super tight. There's not stress on anything. It's just enough to keep that slack elevated and off the bottom of the fender liner. So at this point, all I have left to do is uh, connect the fender liners all back together and put the car back together. And uh, I'll get this thing logged as soon as I can and let you guys know what I think. Okay guys, let's talk about our wiring harness for a bit because everyone needs to understand exactly what's going on here so that they can make sure that everything is ran correctly and your pump's working correctly. So um, on this one, you have a end, the skinny end here, that's gonna connect to your OEM wiring harness that's coming from your engine, okay? That part of the harness is what plugs into the CWA50. It is wired a certain way to have a 12 volt uh, power supply, a ground, and a PWM wire. I'll explain what all that is later. On the other end of this, we have the connector that connects into the CWA100. And it also has a 12 volt uh, power supply, a ground and a PWM wire. The problem is these don't link up perfectly together. And what I mean by that is on all connectors, there's a one, two, three, or however many there is, there's, there's labels one, two, three, four. And you can see on this one, if I turn this upside down and get focus, you can see there, it says three, two, one. Same thing over here, it's not labeled, but there's a three, two, one, and they're not matched. So the number one wire here, whatever the one position is here, doesn't go to the number one position here. So you need to, before you plug this in, verify that it is wired correctly to ensure the proper function of the pump. So this one here doesn't have any numbers. So how do you figure out what's number one, what's number two, what's number three? Um, I'm gonna try and get this shot in here. 
let me see if I can get this to focus. Hold on one second. So I've got it in there. And if you look, there's three prongs. And then if you see, there's a little tooth on the bottom right there. That little tooth is indicating which one is number one. So the far right pin in this connector that has that little tooth there is number one. So we're gonna roll that over so it makes more sense. So now that tooth is on the top. So that means the far left pin is number one, the middle one is number two, and the far right one is number three. Okay, so the correct pinage for a CWA50 to CWA103 uh, conversion is the number one wire from the CWA50 side will connect to the number two position on the CWA100 connector. The number two position will go to the number three position, and the number three position will go to the number one position. So I will have this all written down in the description so that you can see that, and I'm also gonna post a graphic here momentarily that you'll be able to pause on and look at, and I'll have a link to the uh, picture in uh, the description that actually has both wiring diagrams it's going to show them both on there, make it really clear. And I've actually color coded it. The colors aren't specific to the wire, so don't get confused there. I just put colors so that number one, you know, match with the other one. So you show like red to red, blue to blue, green to green, just so you could understand. So let's look at this. We know that on the far left side is our number one and because it's got that little nub. And so if we look over here, the number one color on our harness, and the harnesses can vary depending on whether you build them or not or where you buy them. This one was given to us by Merck uh, Racing. You can get all these materials and build your own for about $11, $12. But if you just buy it yourself, just verify everything's done correctly. So here, the number one is red, number two is yellow, number three is black. So the one here, remember, is gonna go to the number two position on the other end. If we bring that over here, we can see our numbers we have three, two, one. So number one on the left goes to number two. So that's wired correctly. Number two, which is our PWM wire, needs to go to number three. And it was wired correctly. Mine's out. I'll tell you why in just a moment. But that was wired correctly. Number two to number three. And then over here, number three, the black wire, was supposed to go to number one. And so that is in there correctly. This was set up correctly. So your red wire, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that's your 12 volt power. Your yellow wire is your PWM wire, and your black wire on this particular harness is your ground. The PWM wire is basically a wire that allows the ECU to connect and control the coolant pump. So on your OEM CWA50, that PWM wire is transmitting information from your ECU to the pump and saying, hey, we need you to spin this fast. So when you're under light load and you're not really doing a lot, you can, or I'm sorry, the ECU is telling the pump, you know, you don't have to work very hard, you know, just 10 or 20%. But as you go wide open throttle, the ECU sends a signal through the PWM, the PWM wire to the coolant pump that says, hey, we need all you've got. You need to go at 80, 90, 100%. The problem is the PWM wire, when you convert it to work, when you have this wiring harness and you connect a CWA 100, doesn't always work. For whatever reason, no rhyme or reason, some 30T engines do not work with the PWM wire on their CWA 100-3. Um, I haven't been able to find out exactly why that is to remedy it. So what most people do is they either snip or depin the PWM wire. And what that will do is that will cause the coolant pump, the CWA 100, to run at 100% the entire time. Now, some downfalls to this. Rarely, this could cause the CWA100 to fail prematurely. It seems to be a very rare occasion that that happens, um, but it is obviously in a potential issue. Um, but other than that, there's really no downfall. It's constantly going to be moving that coolant through your supercharger and heat exchanger loop. So it should constantly be cooling a little bit better, as well as having your engine recover from uh, IIT spikes all the faster. Uh, I used a depinning tool, which this is a depinning tool. We also call them a terminal tool, something like this. Um, I didn't use this exact one. This is just one I have laying around, but you have these two tiny little metal pieces that basically fit in. Let me get this to focus. They fit in above and below the actual uh, pins from the wire inside here, and you just push them out. Uh, so you can probably see a lot of videos online on how to exactly do that. But uh, I have mine out. I just tucked it back up into the protective sheathing so it didn't get damaged. But since this is all routed correctly, I want mine running at 100%. What that's also going to allow me to do is when I bleed the car, there's always going to be coolant pushing through the loop. So I won't actually have to raise the revs uh, or you know put, put anything in the car to get the revs up to 2,000 RPMs or anything like that. I'll let it just to be able to idle and I'll be able to bleed the car a little bit easier. 
uh, since this is running at 100% all the time and I won't have to use VCDS or OBD11 in order to uh, get the coolant pump running at 100%. Some people call this the pump mod, things like that. So anyways, I wanna make sure everybody's crystal clear on this. Make sure you check your harness before you install it and uh, finish the install of your CW103. If you have any questions, post them in the comments below or send us a message or an email.